Gina with Accomplish Quilting Marketing and today in our Accomplish Quilting Studios we have one of our quilting stars Ashley Kowinski who is a co-manager of our Nashville store. You're going to see more videos of Ashley as she's become quite the uh, autopilot master for Accomplish Quilting along with Julie. So Ashley's going to show us some things that customers have been asking for. Would you like to tell sure. me the background of that? Absolutely. Um, so as I work with customers uh, through their training after they purchase machines and then through their advanced work when they start working with customers and on quilts they want to enter into shows, I get phone calls uh, asking how do I do this and how do I do that and one of the uh, more prevalent questions I get is how to resume after a thread break or after the bobbin runs out and so that's the video that we're going to demonstrate today. And so from here, she's going to show you exactly how to do that. If you have questions about a video um, that you'd like shot, contact one of us and we'll shoot those videos. Absolutely. Take it away, Ash. Thank you, Fina. So I've started some pattern on the quilt top. Um, this is a, a particular pattern I chose. This is swirls and feathers. And swirls and feathers is a good one to practice your thread break recovery on because it has a lot of over stitching. So if you can recover from a thread break on this pattern, you can do it on any pattern. So I'm going to resume so that we can see the machine quilting. And then I'll get into these menus uh, after we simulate a thread break. So as we're quilting along, if your top thread were to break, your machine will stop and you'll hear the alarm for the thread break. On the screen, you're going to see a fault pop up. This is normal for a thread break. It's telling you what the machine noticed. It says thread break. It was determined that there was either a thread break or the needle is no longer stitching correctly. Running stopped. So your first step is to hit OK and clear the fault. And then you're going to move to the machine and check what happened. Your thread break sensor can be triggered by a top thread break or the bobbin running out. Now, if the bobbin runs out, it might continue stitching a little bit because the thread break sensor, if you look at this yellow cable, this is your thread break sensor and it senses the check spring movement. So when the check spring moves, the light on the sensor blinks. That means it's working properly. If the top thread is catching on the fabric, even when there's no bobbin, it'll continue stitching until the thread break sensor and the check spring stops moving. So after a thread break, I'm going to check the machine, check my thread path, and re-thread. Get the fresh end. Sharp scissors. Is the top thread good? Through the needle. I picked a really tough spot for this one, right down in the point. I'm going to try to find the end of my thread. Normally, um, to secure your stitches, you'd want to pick back and restart so that you can tie off your tails. So you'd hold the tails to the side. Um, right now my bobbin is still connected because it was a top thread break. So I'm going to move to the point where there was the thread break, pick up my bobbin, find my bobbin tail, keep it long enough so that I can resume stitching and tie off my threads. So there are my two tails. So to resume after the thread break, I'm going to move the machine close to the point where I want it to restart and choose resume, either on the sew head or on the screen. Choose resume. And now I'm going to look at the screen. I only moved the machine close to the point in the pattern, and now all my attention is going to be on the screen. So I'm going to move this menu out of the way and zoom in on the point where my crosshairs are. I'm using the roller on the mouse, rolling it forward to zoom in. And I'm going to look for a faint pink line 
and this pink line is going to show us the, where the stitching is going to start and the direction it's going to stitch. So I'm going to zoom out and look at my pattern and see that it has sewn two feathers and it's going to come up and do the swirl next. So I need to watch the pink line until it matches the next part of the pattern. I'm going to choose move. So even though the crosshairs aren't exactly on the point, that's okay. So when I choose move, the machine will move to that point. So in this process, after you chose move, the machine then shows you what is already sewn and what is yet to be sewn. So already sewn is red, yet to be sewn is green, and we would look at our quilt top and make sure that that matches. So these two flower feathers are stitched out and the swirl is not, so we know that we chose the right location. So now I'm going to hit continue, wait for the machine to move to the exact point, it gives you a preview of the pattern. Now do the pickup, swoop under, you want to floss under to get your tail so that you don't move the machine and then gently hold them to the side. You don't want to hold them really taut because you're going to move your fabric. So you just want to hold them off to the side gently and choose continue. You want to move your thread tails out of the way so that your machine doesn't sew over them. So here I've done another thread break. What happens sometimes is you'll press OK on the sew head. And then sometimes OK on the sew head falls right above the edit button. And if you accidentally choose edit, you won't have the same menus that I showed you before, and you'll be left with this on your screen. So the machine doesn't have your continue resume menu. It's cleared back to your design space. Um, so go is still highlighted because the machine is not ready to sew. So we have pattern yet to be sewn, and we can't resume. So if you come to this step, you're going to want to make sure that your pattern, if I click this, this is the row that we want to do, you want to make sure that your pattern is still green. Sometimes if you sew more than half the pattern, if you accidentally choose edit, or if your sew head gets cleared, your entire pattern will be red. If the pattern is red, when you choose go, the machine should say that there are no patterns in the sew zone available to be sewn. If you hit that roadblock, you're going to move to the machine, right click, and find Q on the menu, which is in the bottom third. Once you choose Q, your pattern is back to green. Once the pattern is green, I can choose Go again. Now right now the machine is processing from the beginning, so it thinks that it wants to start from the beginning start point which we've already sewn pattern, so we don't want it to begin from the start point. So normally, when you start your pattern, you choose continue. In this case, since we're resuming stitching, we're actually going to hit stop, and then we'll have our resume menu back, which was resume or edit. In this case, we're going to choose resume, and then same steps as before, we're gonna move the machine close to where we want it to resume stitching, and then zoom in on the screen. Again, using that roller bar, roller ball on the mouse to zoom in. And we're going to double check that our pink line, the pink dot and the line goes the direction that we want it to stitch. 
In this case, I already have the swirl stitched, so I don't need the pink line to go this direction into the swirl. I need it to be on its way out. So instead of trying to place the needle exactly where it should be, I'm just going to look at the screen and watch for it to jump, which it just did. So I'm going to move that so you can see. If it's on this side, the machine automatically thinks it's going into the swirl, and if I move the machine a little bit, it actually switches to the other side of the pattern. So this is why you want to pay attention to the screen and the pattern on the screen more so than the placement of the needle on the fabric. Once the pink dot is where I need to begin stitching, at this point I would choose move. And I'm going to zoom back out so you can see what the pattern will load. It's going to show in red what's already sewn and in green what is yet to be sewn. Notice in some places there's more red than others. This helps you, helps you tell by the screen where there's double stitching and triple stitching on the pattern. So in this case, this is darker red because it's a swirl and the pattern double, doubles back on itself. So we can tell based on this screen, there's dotted red and then more solid red. So we know that we need to start our stitching right about here to continue that swirl back out. So at this point, I'm gonna choose continue and the machine will move to that point. Anytime after a thread break, we do want to check our thread path. Usually it's not because you're cutting it with scissors. You need a fresh end to thread your needle. Now, you want your thread to be under the foot so that it can continue stitching. So sometimes I keep a thread picker handy so that I can swoop under the foot and pull my tails out to the side. Choose continue. And you're back sewing again. One last important point to consider when repositioning with the Mach 3 Autopilot is should you have to leave your machine, um, you could leave it running since we have the thread brake sensor, it will stop, um, but if you like to, to stay attended to your machine and need to stop to leave for a phone call or a customer um, or for any reason, maybe you're ending quilting for the day, if you stop in the middle of a pattern that's totally okay, um, but should your quilt be moved? You're going to want to pick up your threads and leave tails so that you can tie off later. And I'm going to move the quilt a little bit. So if you were stitching and stopped to recover from a thread break and you leaned on your roller, if your quilt top moved just a little bit, when you resume stitching, since the machine hasn't been repositioned like you would if you advance a row, your stitching might come off a little bit out of line. So the best way to check placement before you start stitching is to actually move to a point in the pattern, so somewhere that you can pick out really easily on the screen, like the base of this feather. Move to a point within a couple of inches, I'd like to say within a palm of your hand, within a couple of inches of the place you'd like to resume, and then check on the screen that it's an exact match. And so in this case, when you zoom all the way in with your roller, each one of these boxes represents a quarter of an inch. So that's a neat tool, not a lot of people pick up right away. When you're zoomed all the way in, 
this box represents a quarter of an inch. So in real life, we should be here, which is where my needle is on the base of that feather, and the crosshairs are over here just a little bit. So if this is a quarter inch, that's not that much, but when you're using a high contrast thread, like the yellow on the purple, that little bit is going to be seen if the stitching isn't exactly on the line. So I'm going to hit edit if it were after a thread break. And I'm going to use my reposition tool, the pink crosshairs, to choose that location at the base of the feather and choose apply. And that will move my crosshairs back ex exactly where they should be. So I'll choose done. Back to full view, and now I can choose go. And again, since I was in edit or design view, when the machine starts, it's going to think it should start from the start point. When we already have pattern sewn, in the beginning we'll choose stop instead of continue. And then we will have our resume menu. I'll move it close to the spot where I want it to resume. Choose resume. If this dialog box is in your way, it's kind of over the point where I want to see, I'm going to grab it with my mouse on the dark menu bar title area. Just move that out of the way and zoom in on the point where my stitching should resume. Again, I'm paying more attention to the screen than to the actual placement of the needle. That is where I need it to continue on the pattern. The pink line is the start point, and the tail is the direction it will be sewing. I'm gonna choose move. Again, it's gonna come up with red for what is already sewn, and green for what is yet to be sewn. When you first hit move, the machine actually doesn't move right away. Um, it gives you a chance to double check your work. So the machine is still out of place, but it's showing that red ending where it should be. So at this point, it gives you a chance to reset. If we needed to reset, we'd hit stop, resume, and then move again. And since I was in the same location, I didn't check the pink tails because we were already in the right spot. So it'll load the profile of the pattern again. Oh. And this is why you always want to check your stitching. So this time it actually shows more red than is supposed to be sewn. Um, so this area down here below the crosshairs is not yet sewn, but it's red on the screen. If it is red on the screen, it will not sew after you choose continue. So we're going to choose stop, resume, zoom in on the pink line, move, Check the stitching in red. Whatever is red should, be, should match whatever is already stitched, and in this case it does. I'm going to choose continue. And it, when you choose continue, the machine will move to that point you chose and give you a preview of the pattern that it's going to sew. At this point, since it moved back to the pattern, I can choose pick up. And continue.